welcome to uh, this uh, conference. I hope you're having a great time up to date at Drupal North. Uh, this conference is a conference I have given at uh, Drupal Camp Montreal as well. And uh, I'm pleased to say that a couple of weeks ago, Acqui actually took the blog version of this uh, conference and put it on their own blog. So this is also published on Acqui as an uh, official blog. Uh, so should you upgrade from Drupal 7 or should you uh, migrate over to Drupal 8? So if you have an existing platform or website on D7, should I be continuing to upgrade it or should I be m migrating over to Drupal 8? Which is basically the question we want to have answered uh, today. So uh, the uh, sequence of uh, this conference is going to be, first we're going to talk about uh, my company, why I'm allowed to talk about this. Uh, why this question is important for you as uh, you know, either website owners, business owners, or maintainers. Uh, the differences and similarities between Drupal 7 and 8. What factors can influence your decisions to looking really at the risks and benefits. And the conclusion. The goal for this conference is to be really more uh, businessy as opposed to tech. I'm going to get into the advantages technologically, but I'm going to explain them as benefits and risks to, uh, of migration or not, as opposed to uh, showing lines of code or any other types of uh, scenarios. So first of all, uh, give you a little background on Symmetris, uh, who we are. Uh, so we've been around since 2004, which is a, a bit more than 13 years ago now, 13 and a half. We're uh, 17 people internally, and uh, our team has the most uh, Drupal certified developers in Quebec uh, in our team. And uh, we've known Drupal since Drupal 5, so which is, I think, 2008 or something-ish around there, 2009. Uh, and we are regular Drupal Camp and Drupal North presenters and sponsors, uh, so I'm glad to be here and talk with you. Um, as I often come, but members of the team as well. I'm president at uh, Symmetris. This is a cool little photo of our team at our offices in Montreal. And uh, yeah, so I'm uh, president there. I founded the company. Uh, I have uh, been involved uh, for a while in the Drupal com uh, community and giving talks and uh, sponsoring and stuff. Um, and I also um, you know, love traveling, love uh, philosophy, music, and my family, my little girls, I brought them over to Ottawa and we're going to spend the rest of the weekend uh, to have some fun around here and meet some friends. So chapter one, uh, staying with Drupal 7 or moving to Drupal 8 and why, why should we be asking ourselves this question? Why is it not a no-brainer? Should we automatically do one or automatically do the other? So first of all, I'm going to start with a few assumptions that uh, you've already invested in Drupal 7, you have a website. Uh, and you want to make this website evolve and I don't need to convince you that Drupal uh, 7 or Drupal in general is cool. Uh, I'm guessing people around the room here are already working with Drupal 7 at least, potentially already Drupal 8. Uh, that this website or web application that you have, you're looking to make it evolve. So if it's just a static website, or a static application and that there's a completely revamped version coming up, uh, then that's not necessarily the context. So what we do is we want to have something that already exists and bring it forward uh, and uh, enhance it. And uh, that you guys are okay with me being more like business speak as opposed to saying, well, hey, look at this function, how that can integrate with your database or API or whatever. Um, just kind of as a show of hands, has anybody in this room already made the decision to either upgrade Drupal 7 or Drupal 8? So who has already moved over to Drupal 8? Is anybody in the room? One, two, cool. Uh, so the rest of you, I'm guessing, are, are still with Drupal 7. Is that, am I correct? You, I'm assuming? They kind of nods. Okay, great. Um, so great, so I, you guys are the right people I want to talk to. Um, so uh, here are elements that are going to impact this deci the decision that we're going to make. So what's the best return on investment? So the cost, uh, the time, uh, how much time again, how is this, uh, the time this is going to take to implement is a, is a factor. How quickly do you need the evolution uh, made for your application or website? Uh, 
is there going to be any changes now you have an existing website uh, an existing application what type of changes to the flexibility of it to the stability of it to the durability of it uh, are going to impact your decision is there going to be um, because you guys are uh, owners of the website, but there's usually a lot of people who are interacting with this website. So the people who are interacting with this website, what's the impact on them? Are you going to have to have uh, somehow a new kind of a training for these people because you're migrating over? Is that some fact that you have to consider? Uh, are there a lot of people involved or not? And your development team, so the guys inter or, or girls internally, who are uh, maintaining the existing website or your uh, external team. Is this easier for them, uh, more complicated for them? These are all different things that can impact the decision of moving to Drupal 8 or just staying with Drupal 7. So, you know, not really spoilers here, but the answer is it depends. Okay, so what, uh, the goal of this talk is to based on your specific context, so each of one of you people have a specific context, and what I'm trying to do is kind of flag elements that in your context are important, that those elements are going to make you say, oh, based on those three criteria, I should be moving over to Drupal 8, or wait a minute, that's a major kind of red flag, I should be staying with Drupal 7. Um, so let's get into it, actually. Uh, so the differences, there's, uh, before we get into actually why or whatever, uh, just kind of have a high level overview of what's, what's the difference between Drupal 8 and Drupal 7, like as a, you know, really a bird's eye view. So first of all, one has a number that's higher than the other, which means it's younger. So Drupal 7 is now six years old-ish, uh, six and a half, and Drupal 8 is uh, fairly, it's not almost two years old. So that's five years apart, so that means one of those two systems has a lot more work that has been done by the community over time, has a lot more modules, has a lot more um, you know, updates and stuff like that have been done to it. But it also means that the, the main core code is more of a legacy type code because we're uh, Drupal and Acquia behind it are investing much more heavily in Drupal 8 now. So it's kind of a, um, you have to understand that these two contexts where uh, oftentimes we're going to start a Drupal 8 website and uh, we're used to, oh, we're going to use this uh, module we used to use all the time and it, it's either not stable yet or there's an alternate version of it and we have to adapt to that. So those are things we have to consider when we're moving on the new system. And the old system has a lot, a lot of stuff going on, but there's stuff that Drupal 8 fixes that was kind of buggy or difficult to do in Drupal 7. Uh, there's three main categories of technical enhancements that Drupal 8 brought to Drupal 7 that Drupal 7 didn't have. So first of all, uh, the, managing the configuration. Uh, one of the main pet peeves, anyway, that my team went on and on all the ways about is that Drupal 7 and previous versions of Drupal had a mix of uh, configurations of the system in the database and in the code. Now in Drupal 8, uh, well the, uh, the reason why it's a pet peeve is that when you're, my, or, or you're updating a new version of the website or adding a module or doing some tweak to a Drupal 7 website and you have live content on the website which is also in the database when you're kind of pushing that to the live version, you kind of have to have a code freeze, or not a code freeze, I mean a, a, a content freeze, where stop inputting content, because now we have to migrate the configurations, and then you have to kind of click on all these configurations manually, and then, okay, now you can start working on the website. There was kind of workarounds, but that's basically how you had to do it, and that was one of the main issues with why configurations were in the database as well as in the code. In Drupal 8, it's structured so that you can deploy configurations as code. So that means you can have the live site going on and updating content and adding new content or whatever and then deploy the code of those configurations onto the live website and not have to uh, kind of freeze your, 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 your content inputting or managing um, tasks. So that makes deployments much easier to do and it makes them much more sophisticated uh, so that you can do a lot of uh, more frequently make deployments of tiny little things and it's not going to impact the life cycle. So that's a main enhancement in Drupal 8. So taking those configurations out of the 
database. I think this, uh, I'm sure Omar knows these things, and there's probably uh, configurations still in the database, but they're just exported into code and then kind of re-imported. Am I correct in saying that? I'm correct. All right. So uh, secondly, the code itself of Drupal is cleaner, uh, uses Symfony and Twig, uh, which is object-oriented um, uh, frameworks, I guess, uh, which makes standardized code. Uh, the code in Drupal is more standardized, so different developers are going to work on it, but they're going to use kind of object-oriented, which is more logical in the way it's structured, so it's easier to manage that code and it's cleaner um, uh, in general. It also requires, by the way, for developers to be familiar with object-oriented programming, which is a step up from people who kind of, you know, kind of worked around stuff. And Well, now they have to really know how to program when they're working on Drupal 8. And finally, uh, there are more modules that were integrated into the core of Drupal uh, in Drupal 8. So by default, and you know, probably all programmers, when they set up a new Drupal website, are going to automatically include a bunch of modules, which are like, like every time I set up a site, I'm always going to kind of put this, 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 this. Well, and those, those are not automatically included in the core. We have to add those on top of the installation, and we just kind of add it to our workflow when we start a website. Uh, in Drupal 8, some of those which are the most important and uh, popular modules have been integrated into the core, mainly for, from uh, our point of view, views and uh, multilingualism. So views is basically the module that allows you to view content in different lists or whatever in Drupal. Most of content display from what we create is, uses views. And multilingualism, which used to be in the past uh, internalization, uh, internationalization and localization and other kind of modules that had to be mixed around that, that had it added to the website and there was different ways of approaching multilingualism and this and that. Well now there's a core structure of multilingualism built into Drupal 8, so it's much more standardized. And the fact that it's in the core, that means that uh, Acquia is uh, the company behind uh, the core of Drupal, you know, has a, a specific set of uh, teams that are dedicated to upgrading the, those modules, so uh, there's kind of a guarantee behind them more than there was in the past. So those are the three main, I'd say, uh, business advantages of the technical enhancements in Drupal 8 and why Drupal 8 is better uh, as a platform than Drupal 7. Uh, Business-wise, what that means is that it's easy, uh, there's also other things that, that, that come included which are not technical, uh, which is mean it's easier to edit content. So on the fly, you kind of go in there, uh, the management of pages, there's an, a module called uh, Paragraph, which makes it easier to have pages that have lots of different types of content and manage those. Uh, you can manage content on the mobile. The, the back end is uh, you know, mobile uh, friendly, so you can kind of be at this conference up in your Drupal website, blah, 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 post the thing, which was more complicated in Drupal 7 unless you had the right theme for the back end. Uh, there's, uh, as we said earlier, the, since the multilingualism module is now part of the core, the whole language support aspect of Drupal is much more uh, fluid. And, uh, and standard, so there's a better multilingual support. And you know, being in Canada, uh, basically every site we work on has multilingualism, so we're real happy that that is, is set up. Uh, there's, now there's a typo there, more digital ecosystem integrations, but um, by default Drupal is integrated with all kinds of different external tools and there's APIs for those tools to link to Drupal and vice versa. And there's a couple of them that are already set up. I know I was talking with uh, the guys at Acqui uh, a couple of weeks ago and they were saying also that um, there's going to be, if it's not already set up, there's like this big integration with actually Drupal and Magento for e-commerce, even though there's a Drupal commerce module. But they're trying to integrate more with external tools, which is kind of a trend in general right now to say that, hey, like, you know, I'm guessing like if you guys know Slack, which is like this texting thing, it's always integrated with all these things, and then MailChimp is integrated with all those things, and Salesforce is integrated. So Drupal already has all those kind of connections uh, set up, and they're and they're they're adding to those. Uh, 
As I mentioned before, since the way the configurations of Drupal are made, you can deploy them in the code, the deployments themselves are much faster to do, and you can do them more frequently. So you can have different versions of the website or corrections that can be brought to the website, and it's much easier to implement them, and they're less risk-prone uh, as to when you're kind of working with different content. Uh, there's a better performance and scalability in general. Well, every kind of version of a software usually uh, adds in performance and scalability enhancements. Uh, so Drupal is no exception to that. The nitty gritty of that, I honestly, I'm not that uh, aware of what that means, but I know that uh, in general it's, it, it, it's good. The, it's, the impact is more often on really large scale sites that have a lot of integrations of data and every kind of page view is integrating with all kinds of data and data database calls. That's one case. The other case is sites that have like phenomenal number of page views. Uh, and then again, performance is always a mix of the application itself, the Drupal, the way it was programmed, and the server and the configurations of that server. So there's all kinds of different, you know, there's, there's hosting providers that are set up specifically for Drupal, and then there's different sizes of, you know, uh, RAM and whatever it is that you can set up. So performance is not only related to how you're using Drupal or how you're coding your website, it's also related to the infrastructure upon which it is set up, but those together you know, uh, make for a better setup in the Drupal 8 as, as opposed to Drupal 7. And uh, content as a service uh, is a concept that was called headless Drupal in Drupal 7. In, uh, and now I'm hear hearing a lot of decoupled Drupal, which is kind of the word now. Uh, basically what that means is that you can use Drupal as a, a content management system, but not a content display system. Whereas let's say you want to manage all a bunch of, uh, let's say uh, you have a, a cooking uh, empire or whatever, and you have a bunch of recipes and you want to manage all your recipes in that system, well, you can do them all in the Drupal system, but you can then have that Drupal backend where you added that content and managed that content, export via API or JSON or whatever to external systems that are going to display those recipes in different formats. It could be a web app, it could be a mobile application, it could be a website, but those are not necessarily need to be in Drupal. Drupal is basically your content repository where you put all your stuff and it kind of has connectors that other systems can connect to. So that's in Drupal 8, approaching Drupal in that fashion where you're using it just to manage content and not the way it's displayed, it's, it's better set up. It also means that even if you are displaying content with your Drupal, it can be fetched from other systems as well. Uh, let's say you want to have a newsletter where it automatically goes to get the latest article and blah, 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 it's an easier to do. So those are all the, the, the main enhancements, I'd say, that Drupal 8 has as opposed to Drupal 7 in general. Now, that doesn't mean because all these cool new doodads are there that you absolutely need to migrate over to Drupal 8. So now I'm going to go through different factors that can influence that decision that you guys are going to be making. Uh, up to date, everything clear? Yeah. Um, so factors that are going to influence uh, that decision. So um, your current Drupal setup, what does that mean? It means that uh, you might have a very simple website, very simple setup to your Drupal. Uh, and that's going to be easier to migrate to Drupal 8 uh, than if you have a lot of custom modules, a lot of content interaction, a lot of advanced uh, synchronizations with other systems. All that stuff was kind of custom built, took a lot of hours of development, and that means a part of those hours are going to have to be redone for Drupal 8 because it's not structured exactly the same way. So if your Drupal 7, let's say, is a website that displays a list of events, and that's about it, then that is uh, probably an e a more interesting candidate for, my, for migrating over to Drupal 8. If your website has those events, plus a login, plus an integration with another system, then it's just that you have to kind of add it into your ROI calculation to say, okay, well, how much time is it going to take to migrate over or not? Secondly, the quantity and complexity of your data. So that's based, I'm kind of answering my second question already with my first, what I was explaining is that 
the more your data is complex, the more complicated it's going to be to migrate to the new system. Because it's not like a one-click migrate. Like, I love that. But there's all kinds of differences, and everything is done custom. Uh, sorry, if everything is done custom, it's going to be more complicated to move over. Uh, obviously, your own budget is going to be a factor here. So if you have uh, a lot of time and a lot of money, well, hey, go ahead. Like, why not be the nice new shining Drupal 8 as opposed to you know sticking with uh, Drupal 7? That being said, uh, sometimes functionalities that do exist in Drupal 7 are not 100% existing in Drupal 8 and need to be custom made, so there's some, some situations where that might not be uh, correct. I'm going to get into, uh, in, a, in about ten, five minutes, I'm going to give you uh, like scenarios, and one of the scenarios is, is related to this budget aspect. Uh, what's the scope of your upcoming enhancements? So let's say, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to add a new field in my contact form. That might not justify an upgrade to Drupal 8. You know, since your site is working, it's in Drupal 7, you have a contact form, great. You're going to add, you know, the, I don't know, would you recommend this to you? That doesn't require, it's like five hours of not even programming. Uh, so it's not worth it to transfer over to Drupal 8. If you have a significant enhancement saying, hey, uh, I have a website and I'm going to add a new e-commerce component to it, or uh, I have, I'm going to add a login system where people can view their, uh, their profile or something, well, that's a significant enhancement to a website. And that, instead of doing it in Drupal 7 and then having to, in a year or two or three, redo that in Drupal 8, it might be a good time to move to Drupal 8 right now if that second part of your next phase of the website is a significant enhancement to the website. Um, how long do you want to have this website you know, in, in the future? So if, in, in that sense is, if you're planning for a redesign, let's say you, you, you know you're going to have a rebranding, you just merged with another company, or uh, you're, you're thinking of having a completely new v version of your brand or something, blah, blah, or, well, those types of situations are going to require uh, programming in any case. So in that sense, if you know you're going to be doing a redesign of the website within a year or two, well, stay with your Drupal 7 now, because within a year or two, when you do that whole redesign or, or UX enhancement or whatever, well, then that's the time when you should migrate over to Drupal 8 instead of spending that money twice. Um, and finally, if if you're looking to build a completely new project that's completely standalone, then obviously go with Drupal 8. Because Drupal 8 right now is stable enough. Like if we were three months after the launch of Drupal 8 right now, I'd be like, you know, let's see how it goes and whatever. And I've talked with actually, it took us a while here at Symmetris to adopt Drupal 8. And we're kind of happy we did because we were talking with a lot of companies. And in the first year after launch, uh, people were having a lot of difficulty setting up Drupal 8 and oh this, uh, we thought we could do this with Drupal 8 but it's not ready yet and blah blah blah. Well right now the Drupal 8 version that exists is very stable, has a lot of modules in it so any new website I would definitely recommend the Drupal 8. The one case where I wouldn't would be is let's say you have a whole um, fleet of websites or a multi-site or something like that and you'd have like this one site that you want to integrate with the others, well, you would probably want to keep that same technology that the other ones are in or have the same backend as the other ones just to kind of maintain the cohesion of how everything is set up technologically and how your team is updating the websites. Let's say you have like, you know, 10 sites that are being updated that have different kind of frame, but they're all linked together by content or whatever. In that case, I'd stick with the technology that you guys already have. And if you're going to be migrating to a completely new multi-site version, then that's when you would transfer over to multi-site Drupal 8 <coughs> in the future. So you just have to con consider your digital ecosystem because it's really difficult for site maintainers to have one site in WordPress, one site in Drupal 7, one site in Drupal 8, one site which is linked to some kind of, you know, JavaScript thing, linked to a Salesforce. It's like every new site is just like a new set of 
uh, things to do. So just to streamline your team's productivity, I'd say use the same platform for all your content uh, delivery. So that in general are different elements that are going to impact that decision. Uh, so, right, so, so that's basically kind of the gist of what, uh, what needs to be taken into account. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to give you stay with Drupal 7 in these cases, stay with Drupal 8 in these cases. Obviously, each context is specific and different, but these are kind of examples of times when I think you should be going with Drupal 7 and should be going with Drupal 8. And I'm going to be sort of repeating myself, but it's just to, to really be clear about which scenario uh, we recommend uh, which direction. So stay with Drupal 7 if you are not planning any major enhancements. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, in a sense. Why spend money to move something that's not really going to be evolving? Uh, stay with Drupal 7 if you're planning a complete redesign within the next two years, and at that point move to Drupal 8. Uh, if you have a lot of custom developed modules, custom workflows, workflows are a big uh, impact. Uh, rules, I'm not sure, I think it now works with Drupal 8, but it took a while to be 100% uh, functional with Drupal 8. Uh, if you have in interactions with external systems, be it a CRM, an internal database, uh, inventory stuff or whatever, uh, those are all uh, uh, programming heavy uh, elements. So you would have to uh, decide to be rebuilding the whole thing uh, if you're going with Drupal 8, and that's a lot of investment. Uh, stay with Drupal 7 if you really want to deploy something quickly. Because if you have a project that says, hey, it'd be cool to move to Drupal 8 of my, you know, whatever website, which is, let's say, the scale of, I don't know, it took 500 hours to build or something. Well, don't say, hey, great, we'll have our new version of Drupal 8 in November. That's kind of like... You're going to have to test it and this and that and blah, blah, blah. So if you have something that needs to be done because you have a product launch in like early October and you have a, a month and a half frame, well, don't move over to Drupal 8 because it's still, there's a lot of uncertainty. The people you're working with um, uh, internally or externally have to kind of translate whatever was done in Drupal 7 into Drupal 8. So uh, you have to have the time to do it when you're moving over. And if you need to keep the budget as light as possible in the short term, then stay with Drupal 8. It's, gonna, it's kind of like a, a, it's not technical debt, it's maybe it's like business debt or something, in the sense where you're going to have to migrate over to Drupal 8 one day. So if you don't want to spend too much now, you can not spend too much now, but what's going to happen is that, my, the pattern I see often is that I won't spend too much now, I'm just going to patch this thing now. I'll do Drupal 8 like next year. And then January comes like, yeah, well, I'm just going to repatch that other patch. And then what happens is like within a year and a half, you're going to have this, in French we call it Usine à Gaz, but it's like this uh, a website that you have no idea what's linked with what. It's super complicated. And the things that are in, you know, you're going to be fixing this thing and then that thing's going to break. And then it's going to be an emergency that you have to move over to Drupal 8. And it's going to be a rush and blah, blah, blah. So, Ideally, if you're migrating over at planet and kind of keep to that plan, because otherwise you're just going to be patching patches and then it's just going to break. And then, you know, pointing fingers and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't necessarily get to that. Um, now, when should you move to Drupal 8? If you have a new important feature to add, so this big kind of, I was saying, let's say I'm going to add e-commerce uh, to my website. That's a big feature. Um, if you need to guarantee support for more than five years, because Drupal historically has maintained the current and the last version of Drupal when they do security patches and upgrades and stuff like that. So when Drupal 9 is going to come out, Drupal 7 probably will stop maintaining, stop being maintained within a couple months of Drupal 9 coming out. So, and based on, you know, calendars, uh, usually it's about, you know, four or five years between Drupal versions, I'd say. Again, I don't have a magic crystal ball. But, uh, so if you're aiming that this website that you have, you, you want to maintain support on it for the next five years or more, then you should be migrating over to Drupal 8 now. Uh, if you regularly update content, like super frequently, and use multiple languages, just the workflow of all that is easier in Drupal 8, so 
that's it's like a, you can calculate it by the time saved and productivity by your team. Uh, if your website is low complexity, you know, and you know you're going to be using it in the future, just migrate it over because it won't be that much of an investment to to switch it over. Uh, if you can right now invest more time and money up front to reduce the cost down the line of maintaining this website, great. You know, I'd love all my clients to say that. Um, but you know, life happens. But uh, ideally, it, it's all about maintenance and prevention. It's like kind of a vaccine, as opposed to you know having to. As I was saying earlier, you're going to patch and patch and patch, and then you're going to have to kind of put it on the respirators and you know have uh, you know emergency teams come in. While well, ideally, you're kind of exercising and eating well, which is basically upgrading to the latest version all the time. Uh, if you're uh, deploying all the time. Uh, and you have all kinds of new versions. Let's say it, your, your app is really kind of, you know, in the theoretical uh, agile sprint approach where every two weeks you have like a deployment of this thing. Well, move over to Drupal 8 because it's going to save some time and frustration to your team because uh, it's, it's really complex to deploy in Drupal 7 as opposed to Drupal 8. Uh, if you have high requirements for performance, scalability, again, I mentioned those earlier. I'm not as uh, knowledgeable about these concepts. But Drupal 8 is better, and that's really with larger scale websites. Uh, and it, again, as I mentioned, if you're starting a new project, like jump into Drupal 8, no, no, no hesitation there. So that basically covers uh, my recommendations of if, should we be staying with Drupal 7, moving to Drupal 8. I'd like to find out if any of you in the uh, room have any questions and just before that just saying if you guys are in the Montreal region and you know people who are developers I'm super interested in you know finding new developers for our team we're actually looking right now for uh, an, an additional developer so if you do uh, please uh, get in touch. Uh, any questions? Cool, I'm back. Uh, have you taken any of your clients through very large scale the 78? Depends on how you define large scale. Uh, usually what happens when we're talking really large scale is uh, we take the opportunity to say, well, do we really want to reproduce exactly what's in the Drupal 7 website? Or take this opportunity to rethink the D8 website and say we're going to keep the kind of the, the business objectives that it attains and the content that it has, but maybe this module is not really required anymore. And maybe we can approach it this way. So we when it's larger scale, we usually approach it as a new project that has really kind of a really good uh, base on which to work. The danger that we, or not danger is probably a too big a word, uh, the uh, situation we are, that arises often is that a client is going to say, well, I have all this in my Drupal 7 website. I want to find it in my Drupal 8. Like, why would I remove this thing? It's already there. But you have to think of it as saying, well, it's, it's not because it's there that we're going to click a button and it's going to, we're maybe going to take 20 hours to migrate it over. Maybe we should invest those 20 hours in a module that really is uh, an added value for your client as opposed to just kind of, because it's there, let's continue using it. But oftentimes that mentality is it's there already, sticks. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, it does, uh, sort of related, do you, do you find that any clients that you have, um, their expectations are, Well, I, usually it boils down to what I was explaining in the, in the context. So either I have a client who says, well, look, I don't have that much of a budget, and I just want to do this tweak or this fix, and I'm like, okay. And, you know, we can recommend to move over, but again, they won't be able to unlock the amount of time it takes. Yes. I'd say it's kind of where the clients are coming to you saying, oh, I want to play unless they have a reason to know that. They're coming to you asking for features or redesign or something, and that's when you apply the logic that you talk about. Oh, like, is this worth moving or not? I, I haven't had the case where a client saying, oh, I want to play because it is the latest thing. Yeah. And, and if that's all they're saying, anyway, then you can still answer and say yes, but. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, and yes, and, and often, like, since it's such a major thing, you know, it's, 
uh, to move over to Drupal, especially with complex websites. And we're, the, the reason why I say that is that Symmetris are special to these more complex websites. So it's very rare that we're going to do like the restaurant for like, uh, sorry, the website for a restaurant across the street. We do like workflows and intranets and stuff like that. So it's always going to be like this major investment moving over. So it's like, hey, let's take some time to do like an analysis phase and discovery phase, and let's let's take the opportunity to re reconceptualize this project and attain those business needs as opposed to let's say we're just migrating to kind of migrate in that sense what we do is just we just say to the client well if you don't have any business needs that are additional to achieve let's just continue updating and upgrading you know we do a monthly we call it a prevention plan so we we update the, the, the all the modules on the website every month and just make sure that it's up to date uh, yeah it's a similar question um, we've got a very large Mm. Uh, that's an interesting question. How is that more? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And just, just the breaking a set apart is already a complex task. Now you're just doing four or five complex tasks instead of one slightly longer complex task. I'm sort of thinking like new features coming up. Uh, let's say one make maps for sites, uh, make like uh, a maps web service, and just connect to that via REST. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, unless we are, we're running at this, so perhaps in our case, breaking out of a component or some kind of information architecture method in the back end, we can do it with the Yeah, because if you're in that context, you were saying where there's no, it's just using the content in the new Drupal and then connecting it to, it might be an easier way to approach it. If it's really a, a full-fledged site, it's going to be weird uh, to have like, when you're clicking on this link, you're going to the Drupal 8, but when you're clicking on this link, you're going to the Drupal 7, and then just linking it all together, and then the, the, when you're going to be completely finished, it's going to just take too much time, I think. You're going to spend a lot of time kind of managing these two versions that are side by side and all the impacts that that could have. Uh, so I'd say probably no, yeah. Sometimes a website has, you know, like that 80-20 rule where 20% of your features or whatever it is, or functionalities are 80% of the time used and the rest are basically kind of dragging on, but not that many people use it. So removing stuff from your existing website, as I was mentioning to the guy earlier, oftentimes seems like you're backtracking, but oftentimes it's like just focusing on the right stuff. If I could tweak that just a little bit, which is, I probably, I think it's absolutely the right thing to look at what is the minimum before and so what will it be in one of the Actually removing it from Drupal 7, you're creating money for yourself, like why? You know, when Drupal, when you have a Drupal 8 version now, it will have less stuff. Was there really a reason to work at reducing the stuff? Oh, if, if you're wanting to keep the Drupal 7 thing, you really realize that it's made from this burden, sure. Maybe that's the reason to work at reducing it so that you say this on if you are going to switch to the play, no more point working on single line of play. So just go ahead and get the way thing on with the simplified. Cool. And uh, the guy who said.
Yeah. yeah. It's called spaghetti coat. Oh, spaghetti coat. I like that. Okay, cool. Um, and just a thought on the timelines. I think with the Jubilee release cycle, eight four is coming out in the fall. Yeah. And I think nine is supposed to come out six months after that. Really? But Fast then again, I, you know, I, you know, I remember waiting for Drupal seven and waiting for Drupal eight and never having it kind of like being enough, being enough, and push six months and then push nine months. So yeah. again, I wouldn't, you know. I, of course, yeah, I remember like nine months as well. Oh, okay. I remember how long. It took, but I think because of that. Oh, right, okay. So I think that's the plan, and I think the move from 8.4 to 9 is going to be like, you know, they're not going to go to some clear like that. It's going to be a much more similar. Yeah, yeah, I think there was a major evo evolution from 7 to 8, it was like major, and I don't think, you know, 8 to 9 is like going to be that significant. Well, it's going to be a big, you know, it's going to be a version, yeah. but I don't think they're going to completely rewrite the database or whatever. I think the promise is that if you're a mod, both of you're also going to work for your so that's something that we're considering all the way over to Drupal 7 website and Drupal 7 end of life is supposed to happen sometime next year, so... Really? Well, that, that's... If that's the case, yeah, right, 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 yeah, yeah. Unless some big hurdle happens. So okay, well then, wow. Big, well, anyway, just... We've been doing some research. Okay, cool. Very so right, interesting. Yeah? So, non-technical question, more yeah. from a business standpoint, that may get technical over here, but... In the situation where we have clients that are starting a new project, that are sold on Drupal, that want to make sure that they're making the investment moving forward, but are using uh, other technologies such as Civi CRM that are not currently supported on D8, what is the act like? I, I'm trying to talk to some of my clients about like, can you hold on for a little while if you really want to go to D8, or is it better to go to D7, but you might have to upgrade that in a couple of years? What is the actual like well, thought yeah. among people on this right now? I mean, for somebody that's not a developer, just be very honest. Well, the, the uh, Civi CRM is a specific case in the sense where, from my experience of Civi CRM, it's kind of branded as an extension or a module to Drupal, but basically it's like a, a, a CMS in itself that yeah. kind of connects to Drupal. So it's kind of like saying I'm adding Salesforce to Drupal, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think that, like CVCRM could almost exist as a standalone thing uh, apart from Drupal. So in that specific case, I'd say do we what type of integration they need between the CV CRM and the Drupal? Because I'd just say go with Drupal 8 and then have the CV CRM kind of stand alone on the side. And, and I think it pops into a Drupal 7 if you want to do the Drupal version, but then just don't customize that Drupal, leave the CV CRM alone, kind of. So um, try and look at the two systems, try and separate them for now. Probably, because that's the way CV CRM, from my experience, works anyway. It's kind of like trying to, you know take over your Drupal and do it their way, as opposed to kind of do it the Drupal way. Gotcha. Uh, so if they're working, if they, they're really adamant on Drupal, I have no hesitation to recommend Drupal 8. You know, because based on the, our experience and the fact that it's almost two years, uh, you know, running time, uh, the modules that we felt were missing are now there, so uh, it's, it's stable enough to build new sites and it has all the advantages that Drupal 7 didn't have. So, uh, <laughs> almost finished. Uh, so yes, I, I highly recommend Drupal 8 as opposed to 7. And again, that's another reason Drupal 7 within a year will be supported. Yeah, that is. So, like, if, you know, again, I, probably to be realistic, I'd say within a year and a half to two years. But, but still, still, that's in that investment time. That yeah, because they're going to be building, if they're going to be building this, it's going to be launched in 2018. So then, that's, it. that's a year, year and a half. So it, well, that, that, that's why as soon as you mentioned that it could be coming up like the end of life sooner than that, that's why I just instantly thought yeah. a bunch of people were like, oh, that kind of changes our Right, because I, I, I assumed, again, as I was mentioning, I assumed it would be another four to five years window, but if it's a two, three year window, then, then no, wait a minute, different that's different. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to do our official documentation, so 9 is going to come out of like spring, right. but um, there's a series of Right. But is it gonna is it gonna come out for real? Is it gonna be like a beta? Or? Well, nine. Just say nine. Okay. Where? Just, just out of curiosity, where did you see the? All the Drupal like. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. 
All right, thank you. Is there any other questions? I don't for one last, oh, last question. A lot of these thinking, a lot of the logic here was uh, client facing yeah. logic. Yeah. But a lot, if you're a Drupal shop or a service provider, you have more incentive to actually start playing with Drupal 8 for sure. earlier, yeah. develop that expertise, mm -hmm. uh, play with the funky new toys, and with the new release of the very minor point release, you're actually getting new features now. Every point one, point two, there's actually new stuff coming with it that it is helping you make. So you get the goodies to play with, that you can get familiar with, that you're going to be selling to other people and working with for other people later on also. So if you're a service provider, there's even more ways to play. You should be starting to move your own little sites all over to. Oh yeah, like we're 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 definitely playing in D eight. Like uh, the the standalone sites are all going up that way. It's just more for those people that are using the city CRM uh, <laughs> to manage all of their clients and their donors. And I think what you presented was the exact way to, to do that. Hey, how much can you afford to to hold off on this? If you can't afford, are you ready for an investment again in a couple of years? Like that's the logic of Facebook. Yeah. Great. Right, thanks. Cool. Thank you very much. Have a good end of uh, Drupal Note.